Living Seed Media brings to you God's Word, which is His comprehensive equipment for changing lives. May the Lord impact your heart as you encounter His Word. For further inquiry or counsel, contact Peace House, P.O. Box 971, Boko, Benue State, Nigeria. Telephone numbers 0703 03636 59 0703 768198 Email address lsmedia at org or visit our website at www.livingseed.org Let us sit back and listen as the servant of God brings forth the word of life. Thank you for this action again. We bless you for your work that you have begun in our lives. And we are looking unto you that you will perfect that work in the name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you for bringing us back to this class. We are trusting you that you will uh, push us forward and give us a very firm grip on the things that your spirit is speaking to us about. Lord, we thank you that you will help us. In Jesus' name we will pray. Amen. Amen. So how can we move on from the understanding of what the Lord Jesus has already accomplished in our heart? How do we effect it? All right. Ready? Yeah. Praise the Lord. Now, Second Corinthians 5, verse 17. And if therefore, if anyone is in Christ, if anyone is in Christ, he is what? Is a new creation. All things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. When Jesus Christ stepped into our life, He stepped in in order to do a thorough and a complete work. There are certain things now that God will now want us to do as a result of what God has already done in your life. Certain things that God wants you now to do because of the way He has brought you to Himself, particularly at this point. Hallelujah. Now, let's look at that together. I want you to turn your Bibles to the book of Matthew. Matthew. Let's quickly look at the book of Matthew. Matthew chapter 3. I want us to read from verse 6. We'll read from verse 5. Let's read from verse 5. And we will read down until verse 11. From verse 5 to 11. He says, Then Jerusalem, all Judea, and all the region around the Jordan went out to him. And they were baptized by him, confessing, I mean in the Jordan, confessing their sins. But when he saw many of the Pharisees and Sadducees coming to his baptism, he said to them, Brood of vipers, who wants you to flee from the wrath to come? 
therefore bear fruit worthy of repentance and do not think to say to yourself we have Abraham as our father for I say to you that God is able to raise up children to Abraham from this stone and even now the axe is laid to the root of the tree therefore every tree which does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire I indeed baptize you with water unto repentance for he who is coming after me is mightier than I whose standards I am not worthy to carry he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire now let's stop there may the Lord uh, make his word to be read in our hearts in Jesus name Amen now these people that we are reading about who came for the baptism of John we were told that they came confessing their sins in that not so in verse 6 that they came confessing their sins now let's say that what does it mean to confess one thing of course the bible says that uh, whosoever covereth his sin what did the bible say about him that he will not prosper but whosoever confesses and forsake shall do what obtain mercy now the first way to deal with sin and get rid of it completely in one's life is to do what is to do what is to confess to now when people take steps to give their life to Christ or to rededicate their life to Christ that is a good step but there is something if we don't do that always brings the devil back into your life when even though you are willing to, to repent I mean to give your life to Christ but you are not ready to confess what are you hearing me what you have been doing now when there is no confession of what a man has been doing so the first thing we are dealing with now is how do we handle our confession in order for it not to bounce back to us again after God has already uh, decided to accept us and to forgive us now you will notice that the Bible says that whosoever covereth his sin so the first thing about sin is that if you cover it no matter how you cry and pray you will not make progress do you know why sin only grows under a cover are you the enemy now if for example you know that there is a sinful habit that is really troubling you several times you may be praying you may even come uh, to a meeting and say oh God I want to change I want to change but you have not particularly pointed at the issue that is always making you to go back into sin you are covering it sometimes we cover sin even with prayer sometimes people cover sin even with activity but until you confess a sin you have not yet believed I mean you have not yet uprooted the power of that sin from your life the reason is because sin enjoys secretness or secrecy in order to grow hey you are not understanding me now yeah. are you understanding me now yeah. now so the first thing that breaks the power of sin from your life is to expose it what did I say? expose it by confessing it out 
when you are ready to expose a simple habit, what you are doing to that simple habit is that you are giving it a, a final blow that will not give it chance to grow again. But you know, for example, if, for example, you have problems of immorality, you can be crying and say, God, help me, help me, help me, help me. But you have never, never confessed that issue of immorality to the point of pinpointing <coughs> to what extent have you been going with it. To the extent of identifying, if for example, there is someone you are involved directly with, you, 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 in order to be completely free, you've got to handle that now, you know, direct. I say now, now that Jesus has changed that old man from my life, I will not cover any of his work anymore. Are you hearing me now? Because when Jesus comes into your life, he removes that old life. He has taken away that stony heart. He has put in you the heart of flesh now. And all things have become new. But if you now cover some of the work of the old life, either because you don't want people to know about it, do you know what you are doing? Is that you are not sinning. You are not sinning. One day like this, it will break out again. He said, but I have repented of this thing. The reason is because you never did what? Expose it. So, when they came confessing, the Bible says in 1 John chapter 1 verse 9. If you look at 1 John chapter 1 verse 9, what did it say? Can somebody read 1 John chapter 1 verse 9 for us? 1 John chapter 1 and verse 9. Who reads that? Yes. Now, do you notice that it says if we confess what? Our sin. Now, there's different from saying, Oh Lord, I'm a sinner. I'm a sinner. I'm a sinner. Oh Lord, forgive me. I'm a sinner. Is that confession? Is that confession? No, that's not confession. What did he say? If we confess what? Our sins. When we talk about our sins, that means definite. That means something identifiable. Something that actually happens. Something that you know it is the thing that you have been doing and the Holy Spirit is saying, this is wrong. You know, sometimes we go for church and we say, Oh Lord, we have left undone what we ought to do, and we have done what, uh, what we ought not to do. Have mercy on us, we are miserable offenders. Is that confession? Is that confession? No, that's not confession. Because we are not pinpointing where the issues are. Is that all right now? Now, in order to break the power of sin, once and for all, you must pinpoint it. You must do what? Pinpoint it. You must not cover it. If it involves someone, and in order to break from it, you must pinpoint that and pinpoint the person. You must mention that person's name even before God. Do you understand me now? You are saying, oh God, this thing that I have been doing with the minister and so, I know that this thing is wrong. And I am confessing that in your presence. I am opening it up to you. Now the Bible says, when we confess our things like that, what does God do now? God is Faithful and just to do what? Forgive us. To forgive us and then to do what? To cleanse us from all unrighteousness. 
That's the fourth issue about confession in order to break the power of sin. But if though you think you want to repent, but you are covering something, it will grow again. And that is the reason why sometimes somebody has given his life to Christ almost five, six, seven times, and the same issues are coming up again. Do you know why? He has covered it. So in order for our progress to be very straightforward, I would like you, as we will pray, to really, really deal with that. It's part of our past life and we need to pack it out. Amen. We don't need to keep it anywhere because it's no more in our life. We are no longer going to do it. And we should not be ashamed eh, of what God has forgiven us about. You are not getting me now. Something that God has said, I will not remember again. What do you also do? You should also not for, I mean, you should forget about it. But the way to forget about it is not to cover it. Expose it so that it can leave you. Do you know that if, for example, you are the one who impregnated a girl, eh? people ask, hey, and this, you say, I don't know about it, though. I'm not the one who, and actually nobody knew. But now you gave your life to Christ. And you said, look, now I'm a Christian. But you did not confess that issue and say, God, Concerning the period that was pregnant, that I said I was not the one, I am the one, and I know that I told a lie. I am the one, I am sorry about it. Now, when you have said that, you know you are dealing with one particular issue, isn't it? God will strengthen that. But beyond that, now, you will now, in order to be free, in order to kill sin completely, if you see the Sicilia or those who do the light, what are we going to do? We are going to now confess. Now you see, once you confess that, the issue automatically is behind you. Whatever problem is behind you, God now will help you to resolve it. But as long as you keep it, you know that any time you now see Sicilia or you remember Sicilia, something will come back to your conscience. And you know what to say? Are you really serious? Do you think God has forgiven you? And when that comes, it comes as if the snake has come to bite you again. And before you know it, all your enjoyment, all your faith, all your prayer life, what will happen to everything that time? Everything will just and the devil will now come back to you that sin, actually you have not been saved. Why are you punishing yourself? And before you know it, the old things that you even saw are coming back. I don't know whether you are following what I'm dealing with now. So, in order to be victorious, so that this thing that God did for us this week, we will not be going up and down with it again. We must look into those sections of our life that we believe we need to be able to discuss with you about, you need to open it up and say, God, let this thing finish now. Do you know there are times that maybe somebody, a man, has cheated on his wife. So now you have repented. You have come to Jesus. And Jesus has removed that old heart. That old heart is removed. You are now with a new heart. And in your heart, you are not designing to go back into sin anymore. Hallelujah. But you've not yet opened that issue so that it can be washed away. It can be taken out. It can be passed aside so that God can give you a new beginning entirely. Now, maybe you are afraid that when I have to confess now, my wife will not trust me again. And so you kept it. Even though 
you are going for fellowship and all of that, do you know what will happen? Every time you see your wife, every time you remember that thing, something hits your heart straight. Am I correct? And it reminds you that you are still a liar. So, once anybody stands up to preach again and he wants to give altar call, you know what will happen? Your mind will go back to that problem. And you would like to come and respond. But the issue is that if you have confessed it, God will have cleansed it, washed it away, and released you completely. And even if your wife was annoyed for a while, when she now knows that there is a genuineness of conversion that has taken place in your life, she will take it as a new beginning. Oh, you are not understanding me again. Are you following me at all? Yes. All right. So, the first thing that these people came confessing their sins. They were saying, I did this, I did this, I did this, I don't want to do this again. It's very important. Sometimes because when you first made a decision, this thing did not come through. You didn't, nobody else either explained to you or you didn't know you should have done that. It lingered. So it, it started growing again. It started growing again. It started coming back to you again. Now, Brother John was telling them, he said, look. Therefore, look at that eight. Now it says, therefore, Bear fruit. That is what? Worthy of repentance. Is there any other version? Chapter 3, verse 8. Since I believe in you, that you have been returned from your sin and turned to God. True! By the way you live, that you have really, really turned from your sin, and you have turned unto God. So the Bible says, bringing forth the fruit of what? Repentance. Now what would be fruit of repentance? Fruit of repentance will be a destiny act that immediately establishes that the things you used to do, you do them no more. And if anybody says, why are you not doing this thing again? He says, the old man that used to do that, what has happened to him? He passed away. There's a new man here completely. Now, what will be the fruit of repentance? The fruit of repentance, the first fruit that God is expecting, is that change of life that makes you walk away. Are you getting me? from the things you used to do before. Now, I want you to get that there's a difference in the thing I'm saying, and I want you to hear me. Now, you are not trying to walk away from what you are doing before in order to be saved. So, you are not getting that. You get that now. Now, before, what you used to try to do is that you are thinking that if I can stop, doing what I was doing back before, then I will be saved. Uh -uh. Nobody can be saved by trying to save himself. Are you getting me now? Nobody can change because he is trying to change. But something happened. What happened? There was God's power that did what? That brought a change. He said, a new heart will I give you. A new spirit will I put within you. I will take away from you what? The heart of stone. And I will put in you the heart of flesh. Now because God has done that, God has already done that. He has removed that old heart. Is that alright? Now, the reason why you are going to now stop doing it, what used to do before. It's not because you want to you want God 
to save you. It is because God has already done what? Has already saved you, has already delivered you, has already removed the old man from inside you. That's why you don't do what you used to do before. Hey, that's all right now. I have come to the point now of the fruit of repentance. And what am I dealing with the fruit of repentance? That is the result of what has already happened in your life. Eh? Because the man that used to fornicate inside of me has passed away. Are you understanding that now? When the girl that I used to fornicate with, when, when they come around, what do I do? What do I do? Huh? I'm not hearing you. I said the man that your your boyfriend has passed away is a new man here now. So why am I no longer fornicating with them? Huh? Because the old man, God has taken me away. And there's a new man here. And the new man is that being here. Is not a fornicator. Do you understand that now? Now, when I am able now to say to those girls that there are the things I used to do, I do them no more. The things I used to do, I do them no more. The things I used to do, I do them no more. There is a great change. Since I'm born again. Now, when I do that now, the story of the things I used to do, I don't do them again. What am I bringing forth now? Those now are the fruit eh, of what? Of repentance. Now, that you repented in the last two days until you bring forth the fruit of it. It doesn't show. The not show. <coughs> eh? Now, but how do we bring forth the fruit? Can we bring a fruit where there is no plant? Aha. So that's why I'm saying that the fruit of repentance is not what you are doing in order to change. It's what you are doing because you have already changed. Do you understand that now? Now, when somebody comes to you and he says, can, I, can we go out and drink? Eh? What do you say to him? He says, sorry, the man that used to drink inside of me, what has happened to that man? He has passed away. The man here now, he doesn't drink, he doesn't drink anymore. He's a new man entirely. What are you bringing for now? That is the fruit of the repentance that has already taken place. Do you get me now? So, repentance is something that has happened inside and the change that God himself brought to pass in your life as soon as you gave your life to him, as soon as you surrendered him, that has taken place. But you now need to follow up what God has done inside of you with what? With the practical fruit of repentance. Now, can I give you the illustration? Now, there was a woman that you used to call her with because the way she always annoys you. And you decided that you will not go and greet her at all. Eh? But the woman that was offended inside of you, what happened to that one? That has passed. And a new heart has come in here. And this new heart has no quarrel with that other woman. Is that all right? Now, how do you now prove? that there is a new woman inside of you now. Eh? 
We should not go back to that woman and treat her. And say, okay, Madam, how are you? Uh, fine, you see. The woman that used to quarrel with you actually passed away. There's a new woman here. And uh, forget about that one. Let's start a new thing entirely. What are you bringing for now? The fruit of repentance. But, for example, let's say you say you have repented. And that woman you used to quarrel with, you still talk and you still quarrel. And then she said you carry the Bible up and down and say, yes, I thank God I'm a Christian. But you still quarrel. Is there a the new evidence of no. repentance? No. Mm-hmm. I don't know whether you understand that now. Yes. So what God has done is that a change are taking place. Eh? And we say all these new things, they came from where? From God. God has done something in your life and you must not forget it. You should keep knowing that, yes, thank you, Jesus, for what you did this last time. Thank you, Jesus, for the way you affected my life this last time. I am a new person now. I'm a new person and I'm not going back to my home. But then God now says, we should follow it up. By bringing forth what? Right? Fruit of repentance. Now, let me put it like this. Maybe before, what was the problem in your life that Jesus uprooted was addiction? It could be addiction to television, eh? to some certain fields, or addiction to some bad books. Every time you see those books, you're always wanting to go and read it. But the, 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 the man that was addicted, what has happened to that one now, has passed away because if any man being Christ is a new creation, all things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Okay. That has taken place. So God now says, since God and remove what used to be the old life in you. Bring forth the evidence of repentance. How will you bring it forth? Eh? When they want to switch on the, the television to that kind of channel, what do you now say? Ah, the story. It's no longer I that is here now. The boy that likes God has come to And if you are not in position to control the television because sometimes you are not the owner, this is it. So what do you do? You move. You move and say, Where are you going? Is that because I have repented? What are you bringing for now? The root of repentance. But supposing, when they were sitting on that thing, yeah, you stay there, you stay where? Well, and you finish watching it. Even though God did something in your life, because you now develop this for the root of repentance. Are you getting me? Before you say, the devil will do what? will jump on the neck again and then they will want to come back. Do you get what I'm dealing with now? So, God now says, since God has done a work like this in your life, the first thing we should be looking at now is the genuine root of repentance. Now, repentance is not a matter of crime. Repentance is an action. Is that alright? Repentance is not even a matter of praying. What did I say repentance is? It's an action. When somebody is going like this before, and then he turns and he's going now like this, that's when we say he has turned. Have it? He has repented. That is action. So God now wants us, right from today, to go and bring forth practical actions that will prove 
what God has already done. Where is your life? Praise the Lord. Amen. Now, when I preached somewhere, I think uh, there was a copper. I think we were copper together. And we were, we were always marching every morning like this. And so one of those days, there was this uh, lady that she, she's in the club of lazy coppers like me. You know what we call lazy coppers? Those of us that cannot climb the mountain in those days, so once they are jogging and they are saying, hey, 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 then those of us that are lazy coppers, we will drop and then we will be clapping for them. You know, that kind of thing. Now, I normally do that because I wanted to win souls. So when I see some lazy coppers who are just, so I will just join them and then we'll be talking. So I joined them one of this morning and we started talking. And so this girl gave her life to Christ. She said she's ready to give her life to Christ. Said, okay, we pray together. And I assure her that her life has changed as the word of God told her. And sincerely speaking, her life changed. Up to today, she is a very good Christian. Praise the Lord. But on that day, and I told her, I said, can you tell me what do you think has been the problem of your life? She told me several things. Then she said, and then there was this boyfriend that she has been keeping for the past four years. And that they have been thinking they will marry themselves. And then I said, boyfriend, yes, I said, okay. I said, but uh, did you know that uh, you do not in Christ, the new Christian. Yes, yes. Uh, and that whole thing has passed away. She said yes. I said, so concerning that uh, relationship with that boy, is it a new thing? No, she said it's an old thing. I said, so what has happened to that relationship now? That's passed away. That's true. It means I won't marry that boy again. <laughs> you know, she was the one who suddenly discovered it. I said yes, because the girl, the boy wanted to marry. What has happened to that, that girl? The fact is, the relationship has changed. It's okay, she will pray about it. I said, no, it's not a matter of faith. It's a matter of the fact. That's the fact. So what would you do? You are going to pick your, your pen this afternoon and write the book and say, uh, obituary notice. <laughs> I'd like to inform you that uh, there was an accident when I had a head-on collision with the gospel and your girlfriend actually died. And that ever since I have become a new creation and I am married to Jesus now. So our relationship here by time dissolved and cancelled. She said, ah, she will not write that letter now. That we should wait until when she finished the NYC camp and then when she knows her posting, she will write the letter there. If you don't, it will seem as if something has not changed. But one day, she took courage and wrote a letter. And when I posted it, when she got the letter posted, she got victory number one. Are you getting me? And she said, say, no, it's when he comes, I will talk to him. I say, ah, do you know the problem? By the time he comes, and you are looking at his face, and you see the way he looks at you, what will happen? Your heart will melt. You won't be able to say it again. Put it in writing so that at least when it's coming, he has a letter. <laughs> and it will be difficult for you to deny your letter or your writing. So when she wrote and posted it, the boy was in me. Do you know, after two weeks, we saw that boy. The boy came all the way to our people and said, 
I got your letter. Is this? Are you the one who wrote this? <laughs> or somebody wrote this for me? She said, yes, I wrote this. Were you dreaming when you wrote this letter? <laughs> because I said I cannot believe it. She said, actually, I was not dreaming. I was very alive when I wrote it. And I wrote exactly what I needed to tell you because of what has happened. You get? So actually this letter, the person to be discussing this with has actually passed it. It was a serious matter that day. And fortunately, I was visiting a people for the weekend to preach. So she quickly laughed. Dear uncle, I said yes. He said, what you told me has happened. The boy has arrived. <laughs> and the boy is saying, so he has agreed with the letter. But she should give her a farewell time. And you did the best. The boy said, at least I know that it is finished. But I traveled away from Guinea to this place. At least one night, this last night, the farewell time. The girl said, farewell with who? <laughs> farewell with who? There's no farewell between me and you because we have never even met. This is a brand new person entirely. The one that you will be farewell with, I told you died. It was interesting. The boy broke down. I had to come in and call the boy aside. I said, sorry, I think she has told you the truth. <laughs> the boy said, is that what you will also say? I said, well, so what do you want us to do? The girl that you used to know has passed away. There's a new one here. You also, you need to repent. Then the boy said, he will repent. He will just repent after tonight. That if the girl should just Agree with me, you will just repent after. You say no. Even if you will repent, the one it will have to be a different life entirely. He went back frustrated. What was that sister bringing for? <laughs> it's a root of repentance. So what thing when that boy comes? She cooks for her, I mean for him, and she sleeps with him for that night and said, Lord. At least this is the last time. After tonight, Lord, I will repent properly and I will not do it again in the name of Jesus. Now, what do you say about that? <laughs> eh? It will never work. She will be back again in the pit of hell. Am I right? Okay. Now, your repentance, if you don't bring out the evidence and you will have practical time, to bring out your fruit of repentance. Praise the Lord. There will be practical opportunities. And in fact, you know what I want to tell you now? As from today, you need to look for that practical action that will establish that you have repented. You need to look for it. You don't need to wait until it comes. Do you understand? Now, I remember Daniel. Daniel. He yeah. was drunk when he came to my house. In fact, he was from a beer palace. And my own house was somewhere like this. And you know, he just came out of the beer palace drunk. And then he wanted to go and urinate. So he forgot where they are urinating the beer palace. <laughs> and then he was entering straight to my bedroom to go and urinate. <laughs> 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 Have you ever seen John Cass? And he was joking every day, where is it, brother? This is my uncle. <laughs> so he went and said, No, this is not your uncle. He said, Okay, so where is it, brother? Yeah. And then she was going to my room. And so we arrested him and took him to the toilet. 
But then I wanted to send him out. He was to say, no, I brought him to your truck. You send him out. I brought him here. Oh, good. So he came and sat down. So we started talking. When I talk small, he said, he's going. But I said, well, you can go. Then you get to the church, but I cannot go away from my chair. Uh, and then you sit down. Now, and I was preaching suddenly. The Lord came down. And God changed his life that moment. So when his life changed, we read the same passage because that's what God does. A new heart like him. So as we read it, suddenly the old heart of stone was taken away. Hallelujah. Amen. And a new heart of the flesh was coming. So he got and he was about to go when we finished prayer. Not knowing that there was a packet of five 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 cigarettes in his front pocket. Eh? And he had just donated get some money to buy a carton of beer for those people they were drinking with and he needed to collect it before he came out. And then he had already deposited some money for a handled gear for that night. Are you getting me now? Now I'm just telling you something that happened. So he came out, then he brought out the packet of 555 pesos. So, sir, what do I do with this now? Because now I am a new creation. It was very dramatic. So he gave me this thing. So we destroyed it there and then. What did it mean for now? <laughs> that the fruit of repentance. We destroyed it. Then he said, What do I do? I said, Go to the, go back to the dear father and collect your change. He said, When he got to the dear father, what occurred to him was so strange. He saw that he said, is this where I have been eating and sleeping? It was smelling terribly to him. 